It is 5.30 and it's time for us to get started. I am so glad that you guys all made the effort to uh, come to class tonight. Um, this is our last Wednesday class of this session, um, which means we have maybe a little bit of an adventure in store. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but I just, I was thinking about putting this class together and uh, putting together all of the tools that we need to be as healthy and connected to ourselves as we can be as we head into the summer. Um, and I, I came across this quote um, that uh, yoga is the journey of the self to the self through the self. Yoga is the journey of the self to the self through the self which is this whole idea of this turning inward, of this connection to you. And through the yoga practice, through meditation, through breath work, through asana, the physical practices, um, it helps us get a little bit closer to our true selves on that journey. Um, so as we go through our practice tonight, we're gonna be doing all of the pieces of yoga to help us on that journey to the self. We're gonna find some strength, some balance, some relaxation, some flexibility, all of those things together. And as always, you're in control. So you do what works best for you tonight. If you need to take a little bit of a break, go for it. If you need to go a little bit deeper, do that too. Um, but remember, this is the journey for you uh, in yoga. So find what's gonna work for you in this moment. Don't worry about any others because they don't even exist. All we have is right now. So, Let's get ready. We're gonna take some time doing some asana and some meditation. So find a comfortable seat, sitting up nice and tall on whatever it is that works for you. And your weight is evenly distributed between both of your hips, ears aligned over shoulders, shoulders over hips, and your hands are on your knees or thighs. Chin is parallel to the mat as you sit up nice and tall and close your eyes or bring them to a soft gaze and begin to settle in to your seat, to this practice tonight. And begin to connect with your breath. Maybe it's the first time that you've even thought about your breath today, which is kind of amazing. But just notice it, and as you inhale, sit up a little bit taller in your seat. As you exhale, let go of your day, as you start to quiet the mind. Do your best to let go of any distractions that might be invading your mind as you sit. And that's just very typical human nature. Uh, and part of the yoga practice is to let go of those distractions without judgment and reconnect to yourself. Begin to deepen your breath, allowing length as you inhale, taking your time. Once your lungs are full, slowly exhaling, pressing all the air out, relaxing the muscles in your face and your shoulders. And then take another couple full, slow rounds of breath here. Do your best to allow your breathing to return back to normal, whatever that might look like. And still sitting up nice and tall, bring your palms together at your heart 
and bring your thumbs to your sternum, your sternum to your thumbs, and have a little bit of a space between the palms. Envision that you're holding some of your energy right in between the hands. And we'll chant the sound of Om together tonight to start our practice. And we'll chant it just one time. So take a full exhale and a deep inhale for Om. Release your hands and gently allow your eyes to flutter open as you keep sitting up nice and tall in your seat. Gently begin to do some uh, rolls with the shoulders, first working both of them back at the same time in the same direction. Stay strong through the core, sitting up nice and tall. And then reverse direction, so bring the shoulders forward. Use your breath to start to relax through the upper body. And then come to stillness. Extend your arms out to a T, and then bring your right elbow underneath your left. So cross the arms in front. We're gonna bend the elbows, and then either bring the backs of the hands together, or if you're feeling twisty, maybe you can even intertwine the arms around each other. Once you've found this twist, which is called eagle arms, see if you can bring your shoulder blades on your back a little bit more. Nice. And if you're struggling with that, maybe untwist just slightly so the shoulder blades are on the back. And then gently bring the elbows up. So we're pointing the elbows upward. And then bring the elbows down towards the belly button. And as you go down, begin to round the shoulders and tuck in. As you inhale, start to sit up. We're going to bring the elbows up, pointing them up as high as they'll go. And then come back to center, nice and neutral. And release that, shake it out a little bit. And also just kind of notice, like if, if your hand is a little bit numb or it's feeling a little bit tight, maybe you were doing that a little bit more intensely than you needed to tonight. Other side, so extend the arms straight out. And then we're gonna bring the left elbow underneath the right or the opposite side, whichever that might be. Bring the backs of the hands together. And then again, decide on this side if you're feeling twisty or not. Bring the shoulder blades on the back. And once again, begin to move the elbows up towards the ceiling, maybe lifting the gaze upward. And then begin to move the elbows down towards the belly button. And we'll begin to round the spine as you pull the stomach in. As you inhale, come on up, again, moving the elbows, maybe pointing them up towards the corner where the ceiling and the wall meet. And then make your way back to the center and release and shake that out a little bit. Bring your hands to your knees or thighs, sitting up nice and tall. As you inhale, bring the chest forward for a seated cow pose. And as you exhale, round the spine for a seated cat pose. Inhale again, bring the chest forward and the shoulders back. Exhale, round the shoulders, pull the belly in, tuck the chin. One more time, inhale, lots of space through the collarbones. Exhale and tuck everything in. And then come back to a neutral spine, flat back. Uh, if you're sitting on a block, remove it. If you're on a blanket, that should be totally fine. Bring your right hand to the floor as you sit up nice and tall, or fingertips, depending on how far away the floor seems. You're going to reach your left arm up overhead, lots of space between the left ear and shoulder, and turn your head to take a look down at the right hand. We're getting some range of motion in the neck as we open up the sides of the body, so turn your head and take a look over the front of your mat. And then if your neck will allow, turn the head and see if you can look up towards the lifted hand. Maybe notice how that feels in the shoulders as you move the neck. Gently turn your head back down towards the right hand. And as you exhale, make your way through center and over to the other side. Left hand comes to the floor. Gently reach the right arm up overhead. Turn your gaze towards the left hand. Lots of space between ears and shoulders. And then turn your head so you're looking over the front of the mat and up towards the lifted hand. 
and release back to center. Nice. Extend both your legs straight out in front of you. And then bend the right knee, placing the right foot on the floor. Hands come around the shin so you can sit up nice and tall. Left foot is flexed. Left hand comes to the knee or shin as you reach the right fingertips behind you for a twist. Turn to see if you can look at your right thumb. As you exhale, unwind back to center. And then we'll switch sides. So extend the right leg straight out. Bend the left knee, grab a hold of the shin so that you can get a nice long spine here, sitting up nice and tall. And then keep the right hand on the shin as you reach the left arm behind you, turning the head, keeping the shoulders relaxed. Maybe you can even see your thumb behind you. On your next exhale, unwind to come back to center and release. Make your way onto your hands and knees in a tabletop position. So in tabletop, it's all fours. Hips are over knees, shoulders are over wrists. Uh, and if you have tender wrists, maybe walk your hands forward a couple inches. Toes are pointed and do cushion your knees if they are tender. As you inhale, drop the belly down and look up towards the ceiling. Exhale to round the spine, pull the belly button in, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Inhale again, bend the elbows a little bit this time as you look up for cow pose. Exhale, round the spine for cat pose. And do a few more of these in your own time and in your own breath. So you can go quickly or you can go slowly. But remember, we're moving the spine here, trying to get movement in each of the vertebra as we take care of all the different motions of the spine. After your next exhale, which is cat pose, come back to a neutral spine, flat back. Engage your abdominal muscles here. So tuck in the lower belly, get nice and strong through the sides of the body, and extend your right arm directly out in front of you. Thumbs are up. And strong and steady, extend the left leg directly behind you, flexing the toes towards the floor, reaching through the right fingertips and pressing through the sole of the foot. Make sure your abdominal muscles are engaged here. Pull in at the belly. As you exhale, bring the elbow and knee to meet best you can underneath yourself. This is like a yoga crunch. As you inhale, extend the arm and leg out. See if you can take your time here. All right, we'll do it again. Exhale to bring the elbow and knee to meet. Round the spine, press into the heel of the left hand. Inhale and extend nice and long. Maybe you're feeling a little warmer now. We're gonna do that one more time. Exhale, elbow and knee meet. Belly tucks in, tuck the chin. Inhale and reach nice and long. And then lower your hand and knee down to the floor and take any movements that might feel good here if you're feeling a little tight in the wrists or the hips or anywhere. And then make your way back to all fours, neutral spine. Again, engage the abdominal muscles here so that you have a nice neutral low back and extend the left arm directly out. Core is nice and strong, hug it into the midline as you kick the right leg directly behind you. Excellent steadiness, everybody. Really great focus. Keep breathing here. And as you exhale, bring the elbow and knee to meet under the body, nice and strong. Inhale and extend the arm and leg. Nice, take your time. Exhale, bring the elbow and knee closer to one another. Inhale and begin to extend the arm and leg. This is a balanced posture, so if you're feeling some balance going on here, good work. Last time, exhale, elbow and knee meet, round the spine, tuck everything in, inhale and reach out nice and long. Great job. Lower your hand and knee down to the floor. Again, take any movements that might feel nice for you and make your way back to child's pose, balasana. And I recommend trying a child's pose with your knees wide and your toes together, arms are extended out in front of you, and you're thinking about lengthening through the back body and through the spine. Child's pose is always a great way to reconnect with yourself when you're on this yoga journey.
gently begin to make your way back to tabletop position on all fours. And step your right foot in front of you for a low lunge. Front knee is lined up over the front ankle. Back toes are pointed. Make sure you cushion the back knee if you need to. Bring your hands to your hips. And as you exhale, shift the weight in the hips forward as we open up the left quad and hip flexor. And in this posture, it's OK if the knee goes beyond the ankle because you've got this back leg connected to the floor holding your weight. Inhale and float your arms up overhead. Shoulders stay relaxed. Little bit of a back bend. Keep the core engaged as you look up. Maybe you can do a little arch in the back. Maybe you're just lifting your eyebrows tonight. Everything is fine. Just looking upward. Come on back to center. Bring your palms together at your heart. Left hand comes to the outside of the knee. Reach your right fingertips behind you. Exhale to release back to center. Bring your fingertips towards the floor. Shift the hips back as you straighten the right leg and flex the right toes up towards the ceiling. And feel free to use your hand to help straighten the leg out if you know that it could use a little extra help. But here, the core is engaged, the shoulders are down as you extend the torso over the right leg, really opening up the, claw, uh, the back of the uh, right hamstrings. Nice. Shift the weight forward again, bending into the front knee. Bring your palms together at your heart. And we're going to do a little bit of a twist. So left elbow comes to the right thigh or on the outside of the leg as you twist towards the right. Exhale to unwind back to center. Fingertips come to the floor and we'll switch sides. So bring the right leg back and step the left foot forward. Again, do what you need to to take care of the back knee and bring your hands to your hips when you're ready. As you exhale, shift the weight in the hips forward, opening up through the right quad and hip flexor. Stay strong and steady in your core. Let the arms float up overhead. Shoulders are relaxed. You're breathing. And then a little bit of a back bend, whatever that looks like for you tonight. Trying to open up through the throat, through the chest. Exhale to come back to center. Bring your hands together at your heart. And then right hand comes to the outside of the knee as you reach the left arm behind for a twist. Steady as you can be here. Exhale your way back to center. Fingertips come towards the floor as the hips move back. We're straightening the left leg, flexing the toes up towards the ceiling. That's really important to access the hamstring on this side. Spine is nice and long and your shoulders are down. Nice work, everybody. All right, shift your weight back into the front knee once again and bring your palms together at your heart. Right elbow comes to the left knee or thigh as you twist towards the left side. Gently unwind back to center. Bring your hands down towards the floor and bring your left knee back to meet the right. Come on up on both knees. So we call this standing on your knees. Extend your right foot out to the side. And your foot can be parallel or perpendicular to the mat depending on what feels good for you. But find an alignment between your ears, shoulders, and hips. And gently let the right fingertips go down the extended leg and reach the left arm up overhead. Parigasana, or gate pose. As you exhale, come through center. Left hand comes to the hip. Nice diagonal line through the right fingertips, really extending. Exhale, come through center. Right hand comes to the leg, reach through the fingertips. All the way through center. Left hand comes to the floor. If the floor is far away, feel free to grab a block. All right, last time on both sides. Come on through center. Think about using your core for the motion here. Steady in the legs. Exhale your way through center. Left hand comes to the floor. And see if you can extend your right foot off of the floor. Flexing the foot helps. Nice work. And we'll come back up to center. And then we'll switch sides. So bring the right knee in and extend the left leg out. And again, you decide with the foot what's going to work best for you. Find a nice, strong core here. And then gently, left fingertips go down the leg. Reach the right arm up overhead.
exhale your way through center. Bring your hand to your hip. Reach through the left fingertips. Lots of space here. All the way back through center. Gentle with the left hand. This is just for a little bit of balance. So if this left leg just disappeared, we would still be able to stand upright. Come through center again. This time, right hand comes to the floor or a block. Left fingertips reach. Nice. And through center, use the core. Steady in the legs. Lots of openness through the neck. Last time, bringing your right fingertips down to the floor. Left arm overhead, and see if you can make some space between your left foot and the floor. Nice work. Use your abdominal muscles to bring yourself steadily back to center. Come onto your hands and knees. Really great work, everybody. Now that we're warmed up, walk the knees back just a couple of inches. Tuck your toes. Engage your abdominal muscles. Make your way back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Your hands are shoulder width apart or wider. If you have tight uh, shoulders, I encourage you to widen your hands a little bit. Feet or hips distance apart. Bend your knees a little bit and see if you can lengthen your spine by lengthening, pressing the hips up and back a little bit more. Let your head relax. And then walk your hands back towards your feet so that you're at a forward fold at the top of your mat. Let your head relax. Let the shoulders relax in this forward fold. With every exhale, rooting down through the feet, lengthening through the back of the head and neck. Bend your knees, press into the feet. Inhale, arms reach wide as you come all the way up. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Find mountain pose at the back of your mat. Feet or hips distance and parallel. Bring your hands to your hips and get a little soft bend in the knees. And then engage your abdominal muscles by sticking the tailbone out, pulling in the lower abs and pointing the tailbone towards the floor. Keeping all that, release your arms down by your sides and straighten the legs as you extend up through the crown of your head. Inhale and float the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, bend your knees deeply as you fold all the way down. Inhale up to a flat back, legs are straight. Exhale, bend the knees deeply as you hinge at the hips. Press into your feet, inhale, arms reach wide as you come all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands to heart center. Nice. Make sure you're still in mountain pose. Nice, strong core. Inhale and reach up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Uttanasana or forward fold. Walk your way forward to plank, top of a push up. So we're aligning the shoulders over the wrists. The legs are straight. Core is engaged here, so pull in at the lower abdominals. Think about pointing your tailbone towards your heels and take a look out on the floor ahead of your mat. Check in with your breath and maybe all of my cueing makes this plank feel a little bit more manageable today. Or maybe you're just breathing and connecting with yourself on this journey. Plank's a great way to be on a journey with ourselves. All right. Move your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Keep your hands and feet in the same place for this downward dog without moving them. And then take your time as you walk your feet forward, coming to a forward fold at the top of your mat. Bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide as you come all the way up. Exhale and hands come to heart center. Uh, if you have a block, grab it and make sure you have it up at the top of your mat at the ready for when we need it. And then find mountain pose, nice and tall. Core is engaged, all four corners of the feet actively pressing into the mat. Inhale and float the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way forward. Step your right foot back to a lunge. Front knee is aligned over the front ankle. Back leg is as straight as it can be. Think about engaging in your core and keeping your hips pretty buoyant here. See if you can lift your fingertips off of the floor. 
Nice. Lower your fingertips back down to the mat and make your way back to plank, top of a push up. Maybe you want to drop both knees or maybe you can step straight back, but we're ending up in Utita Chaturanga. Strong in the belly. And then lower your knees, point your toes and bring your torso all the way down to the floor. Hands are under your shoulders. Keep your elbows tucked in and your stomach strong. On an exhale, lift your chest and shoulders off the mat. Nice. Exhale and lower back down. Tuck your toes, engage your core, and make your way back to downward facing dog. You can go through tabletop or you can go through plank. Yogi's choice. Once you have found your downward facing dog, engage your inner right thigh. And as you inhale, lift your right leg up for three legged dog. Keep the hips as level as you can. Lower the right foot back down. Take a look at your hands and we're gonna step the right foot forward to a lunge. And maybe it's one swooping step. Maybe you need to take a couple of steps to get there. But make any adjustments that you need to to make this lunge just like the lunge when we worked our way back. All right, strong in your abdominal muscles, quietly step the back foot forward so that you're in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide as you come all the way up, arms up overhead, connect the palms and bring them to your heart. Nice. Check in with yourself up at the top of your mat. Make sure your core is engaged, that you're nice and tall. Fingertips down by your sides. Inhale and reach up, take a look up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, fold all the way forward. This time, left foot goes back to a lunge. Get nice and steady here, really grounded in the front foot. Back toes are rooted, strong in the belly, lift the fingertips up off of the floor. Notice how you engage through the thighs and Everything engages more when the fingertips come up. Lower the fingertips down to the mat. Make your way back to plank. Top of a push-up. And if you're really looking to take advantage of some plank today, then I offer up hovering your right foot off of the mat. If you do that, make sure you keep the integrity in your plank. So do your best to avoid letting your hips sink if your right foot is hovering, lower it and allow the left foot to hover off of the mat. Steady breath and wherever you're at, give yourself credit. Not easy. If your left foot is lifted, lower it and then everyone make your way all the way down to the floor. You can lower down in one straight line or drop the knees first. Release your arms down by your sides with your palms face up. Keep your feet connected to the floor so toes are pointed. On an exhale, lift your shoulders, chest, maybe your fingertips up off the mat for a modified locust pose. See if you can keep all 10 toes grounded on the mat. Nice. Exhale and lower back down. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Tuck your toes and make your way back to downward facing dog. You can go through plank. You can go through tabletop. Whatever works for you tonight. Once you find that down dog, engage your inner left thigh and lift the left leg up for three-legged dog on this side. Keep the hips as level as you can. This is just like downward dog, but with one leg lifted. Lower your left foot down. Take a look at your hands and you're gonna step the left foot forward to a lunge making any adjustments on this side that you need to. And this side might be easier or might be a lot harder than the other side. Stay strong and steady in your core. Quietly step the back foot forward, come to a forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, reach the arms wide as you come all the way up. Exhale and hands come to heart center. Nice. Step your right foot back for warrior two. Nice big stance. Back foot's parallel to the back of the mat and your front heel is aligned with the back arch. Bend into the front knee and inhale your arms up to a T. 
Make sure that your core is engaged, nice and strong. Take a look over your front hand, which is the left hand. Shoulders are relaxed, face is relaxed. And just check out this front knee. Make sure that it's aligned with your second or third toe, so you have nice openness through the hips. Bring your right hand down the back leg, flip the left palm, and reach up for Exalted Warrior. Inhale and come back to Warrior Two. Bring your hands to your hips and scoot your right foot in just a little bit. Have your block at the ready. Right hand stays on the back hip, left hand goes onto the block. We're moving into half moon pose or Ardha Chandrasana. So weight pours into the left foot. Left hand is on the block, right foot rises. Keep the right foot flexed as you try to stack the hips. And this might be plenty for you tonight, but if you want to try going a little further in this posture, you can try reaching your right fingertips up towards the ceiling, maybe even turning your head to look upwards. Steady breath wherever you're at, giving yourself credit for doing this. With as much control as you can, gently bring your right toes, or right foot rather, back down to the mat, warrior two. All right, nice work everybody. Bring your hand on either side of the front foot, lift the back heel, make your way back to downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths once you Find your down dog. All right, take a look at your hands and you're gonna bring your right foot forward to a lunge. You can step it straight forward if it helps to drop the back knee first, you're welcome to do that. All right, here we go. We're gonna ground down the back foot, get really strong in the legs and work on coming up to warrior two on this side. And once you're upright, make any adjustments that you need to with your feet so that the front heel is aligned with the back arch. Arms are out to a T. And turn your head to take a look over your right fingertips. Nice, relax the shoulders and the face. Left hand goes down the back leg, reach the right fingertips up. Check in with your breath. Lots of space through the neck here. Inhale to come back to warrior two. Nice. Bring your hands to your hips. Scoot the back foot in just a little bit. And then right hand is going to come to the block. Pour your weight into the right foot as the left foot lifts for Ardha Chandrasana on this side. We're working on getting the left foot to hip height and stacking the hips. And then if you're able, maybe reaching the fingertips up towards the ceiling or even maybe looking up towards the ceiling. Don't be afraid to fall. Steady breath. All right, gently bring your left foot back down to the mat. Come on back to warrior two. Oh my goodness, nice job. One more time, bring your hands on either side of the front foot, lift the back heel and make your way back to downward dog. Maybe it helps to go on the knees or maybe you can just step straight back. Either way is great. Walk your feet up towards your hands so that you're at a forward fold at the top of your mat. Bend your knees, inhale, reach your arms wide as you come all the way up. Exhale and hands come to heart center. Nice job. Step your left foot back for a wide legged stance. So wide legs, feet are parallel to the edges of the mat. Stand up nice and tall. Bring the heels in a little bit so that the toes are aligned um, with the corners of the mat. And extend your arms out to a T. Make sure your abdominal muscles are engaged nice and strong here. Bend into the knees and bring the arms to 90 degree angles for goddess pose. Make sure that core is nice and strong, shoulders are relaxed. And check in with your breath. Sometimes in these more exerting types of postures, we're more inclined to hold our breath. Just let it flow. 
Inhale to straighten the legs. Extend the arms up so that they're at a V, so it's like your body's in the shape of an X. Your core is nice and strong. On an exhale, bend the knees, bring the elbows in towards the core. Nice, strong power squat. Inhale and extend the arms up overhead, straighten the legs. Ah, five-pointed star. Exhale, bring the elbows in as you bend the knees, nice and strong. Inhale, take up lots of space. Big breath. One more time, exhale, pull everything into the core, strong and steady. Inhale as you reach out. Bring your hands to your hips. Pivot your feet again so that they're parallel to the edges of the mat. And as you exhale, hinge forward to a flat back. So you're looking down at the floor, you have a nice long spine. And then bring your right fingertips to the floor or a block and reach your left fingertips up for a twist. Lower the lifted hand and switch sides. Left hand's connected to the floor, right fingertips are up. Core is nice and strong. Exhale to release, and then let yourself fold as far forward as feels comfortable for you here. Let the head relax. See if you can loosen up through the neck. Bring your hands to your hips, press into your feet and come on up to standing and then kick off the back foot. Come on up to the top of your mat. Find mountain pose again. Nice strong abdominal muscles, nice and tall. Bring your hands to your hips and feel your left foot firmly rooted. As you inhale, start to shift your weight and bring your right knee up or perhaps just trying to get the foot off of the floor rather, depending on wherever you're at. Helps to keep the right foot flexed. Gently step the right toes back to a high lunge, Anjane Asana. Nice. Release your arms down by your sides, really broad through the collarbones. A little bit of a back bend as you look up. Inhale, arms come upward as you're back to center. Connect the palms as you bring them to your heart. Take a look at that block. I hope you still have it. Right hand is going to go to the block or the floor if you're feeling up for it tonight. Press your weight into the left foot as the right foot lifts off of the mat. So left foot is connected to the floor. Right hand is connected to the block. And you might be good just working on getting the right foot off the mat. If you want to go a little further, you can extend your left fingertips up for a twist. This is revolved half moon pose. Wherever you are, steady breath and listening to what your body needs to do tonight. Gently unwind, bringing the left fingertips back down towards the floor with as much control as you can. Bring your right toes back down to the mat and inhale your arms up overhead. Squeeze everything into the middle. Nice job, everybody. Shoulders are relaxed. All right, hands come to the hips. Press into your front foot and come on up to the top of your mat. Shake it out a little bit, whatever you need to. Uh, and remember to have that block at the ready if you'd like to use it. Find mountain pose again. Hands are on the hips, nice and strong and tall. Feel your right foot firmly rooted. As you start to shift your weight, inhale to lift the left foot off of the mat. See if you can get your knee up towards hip height, if that's accessible for you tonight. With as much control as you can, step your left toes back to a high lunge, Anjane Asana. And again, any little adjustments you need to to make this accessible for you. So maybe widening your stance on the mat. Fingertips come down towards the floor as you're open through the collarbones. A little bit of a back bend. Take a look up towards the ceiling. Come back to center. Inhale your arms up overhead. Nice. Exhale to bring your hands towards your heart. And we're going to come forward. Left hand comes to the block as, yeah, left hand comes to the block. Left leg rises. And then gently reach your right fingertips up if you want to do a twist here. It really helps to flex that left foot to help with the balance. Nice job, everybody. Exhale to unwind, bringing the right fingertips back down with control gently. Bring your left toes down to the floor. See if you can come on up, reaching your arms up overhead. Feel free to take your time. 
Hands come to your heart, press into the front foot, come on up to the top of your mat and shake it out a little bit. All right. Oh, goody, here we go. Okay, find yourself up at the top of your mat. Core is nice and strong. Inhale and float your arms up. Exhale, sit back, Utkatasana, or fierce pose. In this posture, shift the weight back into your heels. Be really strong in your thighs and in your core. Bring your palms together at your heart. Feel your right foot firmly grounded. Start to shift your weight and see if you can free your left foot. And maybe tonight you're working on just trying to get those toes off of the floor. But if you're feeling rooted, maybe you can cross the left ankle over the right thigh. If you do that, make sure you flex the left foot to protect the knee. And think about pressing the knee towards the floor to help open up through the hips. Steady breath and make sure you're looking at something that's not moving. Gently press into the standing leg, release your left foot down and shake it out. Nice work. Really great focus, everybody. Okay, find your mountain pose up at the top of your mat for the other side. We'll begin by inhaling the arms up and then sitting back for Utkatasana, fierce pose. Nice and strong here. <sighs> Bring your palms together at your heart. Shift your weight into the left foot as you start to free the right and either work on just the balance on this side or maybe cross the right ankle over the thigh. If you do that, keep the shoulders on the back. Keep breathing. Be amazed by yourself. And then gently press into the standing foot, release the right foot down and shake it out a little bit. Awesome, nice work. All right. Find your mountain pose once again. Inhale and float the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold all the way down. Inhale up halfway to a flat back. Elbows are tucked in. Exhale, hinge at the hips and fold forward. Bend into the knees. Inhale, reach your arms wide as you come all the way up. And hands come to your heart. Bring your hands to your hips. Feel your left foot firmly rooted once again. Start to shift your weight as you inhale, lift the right foot off of the floor. See how high you can get the right knee. And then once you have the knee lifted, see if you can bring your hands around the shin and bring your shoulders on your back. Now this might be plenty of an exercise for you to work on tonight, but if you wanna try something a little bit more, keep your left hand on the knee, reach your right fingertips behind you, and for an additional challenge, maybe you can even turn your head to look at your back thumb. All different kinds of elements for wherever you're at tonight, but stay steady and keep breathing. If you're in the twist, unwind, come back to center, hands come to the hips, Lower your right foot down and shake it out a little bit. Nice work. So there's lots of different pieces and lots of elements to that posture. Um, and the main intention of it is to stay really, really grounded in the standing foot and to find some balance there. The rest of it is extra kinds of stuff to play around with once you find that, that firm base. So have some fun with it and don't take it too seriously. All right, find yourself again, nice and tall and strong. This time your right foot is firmly rooted and begin to shift the weight as you inhale the left knee up as high as it will go. Keep standing up nice and tall, and when you're ready, bring your hands around the knee or shin. And you can either keep working on this component or keep your right hand on the knee, reach the left hand behind you, and perhaps even turn your head to look towards the back thumb. focus everybody all right if you're in the twist unwind back to center with as much control as you can lower the lifted foot shake it out a little bit strength balance stretching excellent work we've got all the elements find your mountain pose at the top of your mat because it is almost time to cool down inhale and float your arms up overhead exhale hinge at the hips and fold all the way down Fold as deeply as feels comfortable for you here. Breathe into the backs of your legs, into your hips, into wherever you feel it. 
Bring your right foot back to a lunge. Lower the back knee, point the back toe, and bring your hands to your hips, making any adjustments you need to for the back knee. And then shift the weight in your hips forward again to really open up this right quad that we've given a lot of attention to tonight. With every exhale, see if you can create a little bit more space, a little bit more softness. Release your fingertips, come back to center. So bring the left knee back and step the right foot forward. Low lunge once again, and bring your hands to your hips when you're ready. As you exhale, shift the weight forward, opening up through the left quad. With every exhale, softening, creating space. If this is something that you feel, some of us were like, wow, we can really feel this. Others of us might not feel anything because we're all different. All right, bring your fingertips back down to the floor. Bring your right knee back to meet the left and then scoot around so that you're coming to a seat on the mat. And we'll come to a wide-legged seat. So, it doesn't have to be the widest seat you've ever done, but if you want it to be, it could be tonight. Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall in this seat. Toes and knees are pointed upward. Nice long spine, engaged core. Inhale to reach your arms up overhead. Turn your torso towards the right. As you exhale, hinge over the right leg. Relax your hands down wherever is comfortable. Maybe you can reach your toes. Maybe the floor feels better here. Inhale through center and come all the way up. Turn towards the left. Exhale and hinge over the left leg. Place your hands wherever works for you on this side. Use your breath and use this posture to open up remaining places of tightness. Maybe it's your inner thighs, hips. Inhale to come back up to center. Arms are up overhead. Nice. Release your hands down towards the floor and then begin to make your way forward. Make sure your knees and toes stay pointed upward. We're going to come towards the center as far as makes sense for you. So listen to your inner thighs. That's one of the amazing things about having pain and discomfort in the body is although we sometimes view it as negative, it's actually protecting us and telling us things we need to know. Part of our journey to ourselves. Gently bring the torso back up. Hands come behind the knees. Gently bring the feet together on the floor as you sit up nice and tall. Hands come behind the thighs. Core is engaged, gently tip back for boat pose, or Navasana. If you're able to get your feet off the floor, see if you can bring your shins to parallel. And then you're welcome to hold onto your thighs or try reaching your hands straight ahead. Wherever you're at, make sure that you're breathing, whether you're holding onto the thighs, maybe your toes are close to the floor. And if you want to try an additional challenge, maybe see if you can straighten your legs. Or maybe it's just practicing with straightening one and straightening the other, but notice how that changes the work in the core. Hmm. On your next exhale, cross the legs and come to Sukhasana. Easy pose, nice tall seat. All right, from here, make your way onto your back, however works best for you. We're going to come all the way down to the floor and begin by finding a nice long spine. Knees are bent and feet are hips distance apart and parallel. Release your arms down by your sides. We're preparing for bridge pose, so press into the feet. Lift your hips up, strong through the low back, strong through the glutes. And for some of you, you might find a benefit to walking your feet a little closer to the body. You may find you can lift your hips up a little bit higher here. As you exhale, gently lower your spine back down to the floor. And then once your hips connect to the mat, hug your knees in towards your chest and gently rock from side to side or front and back. Whatever feels good for a massage here. Come to stillness and extend both legs straight up towards the sky. 
flex the feet like you're pressing the soles of your feet into the ceiling and envision your hips at right angles. So you might need to even push the thighs a little bit away from the body. Press your low back into the floor. Engage your abdominal muscles. Fingertips lift up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, we're lifting the shoulders, head up off of the mat using your abdominal muscles. No effort in the neck here. With control, gently lower your shoulders and head back down to the mat. Release your hands down by your sides. And then gently place both feet on the mat knees are bent bring the soles of your feet together let your knees open up wide for supta baddha konasana arms are down by your sides with your palms face up shoulders are nestled down on your back this is always a shavasana option for our last posture if you like Using your hands, gently guide both knees together and bring your knees in towards your chest. Hands go around your right shin as you extend your left leg straight out on the mat. And then do some circles with your right ankle. And make sure that you go in both directions. So reverse the circles if you haven't already. Come to stillness with the foot and flex both of your feet. Lots of activity in both legs. Extend your right arm out to a T. Using your left hand, guide the bent knee across the body for a twist. We're trying to stack the hips here, but you might, may need to do some adjusting to make this accessible for you. Keep the shoulders relaxed on the floor, and if you can, maybe turn your head to look at your right hand. Gently unwind back to center and extend the right leg out on the mat as you bring the left knee in towards your chest, wrapping your hands around the shin. Then do some circles with the left foot. And reverse direction with the circles. Come to stillness with the feet and flex both feet here, really activating the legs all those muscles. And then extend your left arm out to a T. Right hand is on the bent knee, guiding it across the body for a twist. Shoulders are relaxed. And if you can, turn your head and take a look over your left hand. Gently unwind back to center and bring both knees in towards your chest once again. Keeping the knees bent deeply, grab the pinky toe side of each foot or the shins, if the pinky toe side of the foot's not accessible, for happy baby pose. Knees are bent deeply, arms are on the inside of the legs, and you gently rock from side to side or front and back to massage the spine and all of those muscles that have worked so hard in the back body. Come to stillness here. Release your feet down to the mat and make your way into Shavasana. You can take a Shavasana with the feet together and the knees wide, as we discussed. You can have the feet wide and the knees together. A traditional option for Shavasana is to be laying flat on the mat with your feet wider than hips distance apart and your feet just relax out to the sides. Shoulders are nestled down on the back. Arms are down by your sides with your palms face up. Lots of space through the collarbones. Backs of the hands connect to the mat. Yoga is the journey of the self to the self through the self. Enjoy this firm floor beneath you and the effects of your practice tonight, making it a little bit closer to you.
slowly allow your breath to deepen and bring a little bit of movement back to your fingers and your toes. On an inhale, reach your arms up overhead and extend your legs out nice and long for one last final stretch. Bring your knees in as you roll onto your right side. Keeping your eyes closed and using as little effort as possible, make your way up to a seat, sitting up nice and tall. And when you find your seat, bring your palms together at your heart. Yoga is the journey of the self to the self through the self. And all of these practices of lengthening and strengthening of breathing and concentration helps us bring a, a little bit, brings us a little bit closer to our true nature, our true essence. I'm so glad that you are here to practice tonight. And we will close by chanting the sound of Om, and we'll chant it just one time, as loudly or as quietly as you would like. Take a full exhale and a deep inhale for Om. As always, the light in me honors and acknowledges the light in each of you with great respect. Namaste.